So, <clears throat> um, anyway, so the body protects itself from the glucose by becoming insulin resistant. So you go to a doctor and what does he say? Aha, you have a disease, it's called diabetes. No, no, it's the body adapting. All you gotta do is stop eating the bread, the pasta, the and your body won't need to do the, the diabetes dance. Same with high blood pressure. If you're eating kebab, you're eating cheese, pizzas, and whatever, sausage and beef and whatever you eat. And your arteries are getting plugged up. Your body is smart, remember? It knows it has to keep blood flow to the brain, blood flow to the heart. You got to keep everything with, with blood. So how do you keep the blood flow if the arteries are narrow? You increase the pressure. It's the only choice you have. No other choice. So you go to the doctor. He says, aha, you have a disease. It's called high blood pressure. No, change your diet. Go to sleep early. Work on stress. Exercise. It goes away. Your body won't need to adapt. So I just want to, I, it's important that you understand the myth of disease. So now, in order for you, since we know already that toxemia is causing all these different diseases, then obviously, clearly, the most important and fundamental thing you can do is get rid of the toxins, which is what you're doing now. When you're here, you're getting rid of the toxins. And guess what? There's no other way to do it. You don't have two choices. When I was a regular doctor, before I changed, I saw that if somebody had diabetes and they came to me, 10 years later they still had diabetes, but now they had complications from the drugs. The diabetes didn't go away. The high blood pressure didn't go away. Nothing went away. And I realized that I wasn't doing anything. That's why I changed. It doesn't work. Because it's the wrong paradigm. It's the wrong understanding. It's incorrect. Okay, so the first thing you must do is clean your body. Now people often say to me, in fact, someone said to me today, I won't mention any names, but someone said to me today, how long do I have to eat like this? So the example that I like to give is, suppose you had severe bronchitis or emphysema or, or lung cancer and you smoke cigarettes. So I talk to you and you stop smoking cigarettes and we give you treatment and you get better. Are you going to ask me, how long do I have to quit smoking? You're not going to ask that question, right? See, why do we ask that about food? Because we really don't understand how dangerous food is. It's far more dangerous than cigarettes. Far more dangerous than cigarettes. A smoking vegan and a non-smoking regular person eating regular food have the same risk of, of, lung, of lung cancer. Ah. Have you all heard the term standard of care? No? Well, in hospitals, they call what, 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 what the hospital tells you to do is called the standard of care. I call it the standard of scare because they scare you into doing whatever they want you to do. But they call it the standard of care. And if a doctor, like for example, when I was in the, you know, nowadays it's very popular fasting. There's a guy, I saw a guy on TV the other day. He wrote a book and he's getting famous because of fasting. And there's many books out now and they're talking about intermittent fasting. I was talking about fasting for 30 years now, 40 years. It's old. It's probably the oldest remedy. And it's the only one that really works. But anyway, in America, if, 
back in those days, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, a doctor could lose his license for, for recommending fasting. So that's the standard of care. So if someone has cancer, this is the standard of care. What we have is the standard of caring. It's the smile of cancer. This lady came to me in Bangkok and she had stage four colon cancer. And she was told she had six months to live. Well, this is her on the last day when she was getting ready to go home. She looks, doesn't look like she's got six months to live. That's her daughter. And this is the problem to know about cancer. It's not, and, and the reason, listen, even if you don't have cancer, you probably either have a family member who had it, or a friend who had it, or someone. Because now, it's become pandemic. One out of four people in the world will get cancer in their lifetime. There's never been a scourge such as this. There's never been a pandemic of this proportion, ever. So, by the way, we all have cancer in our bodies. We all have cancer cells. The question is, is it going to become a tumor? So actually, there's a doctor I work with in Japan, and we do a special test, and we can tell where you are. Most people have micrograms or milligrams. It's still not a tumor, still not cancer. If you have one gram or more, then you have cancer. So we can, that's a special test we can do. And there's only one doctor. And, we, and I, what I'm trying to do is get somebody who has money so we can buy this guy's knowledge before he dies. He's getting old. It would be a shame if he died. Anyway, it's not hard to get rid of cancer. The hard part is <coughs> keeping it gone. And I know that because almost everybody I see comes back and it's their second, third, fourth recurrence. It keeps coming back. And that's because they don't really do it right in the first place. Okay. So integrative oncology is what we do. Now this is not only oncology, integrative medicine is now becoming well known worldwide. Right? So you go to the doctor with arthritis and if he's an integrative physician, he'll know how to treat you naturally. But integrate means bringing things together. So what I do is I bring together Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, botanical medicine, homeopathy. Bring it all together. Even, even allopath, even the regular medical work. You take the best of each and you bring it together. Anyway, what we do is we promote healing, restore immunity, and ensure the ability to eat, sleep, and laugh. The reason that's important is when in the regular doctors, what happens is if you have cancer, they go to war against the cancer, the tumor. And the doctors, the general, the nurse, and the technician are the soldiers, and they go to war against the tumor. The problem is the battleground is your body. And that's where the battle is fought. So all of the collateral damage is your body. You know, that's like the surgeons. The surgeons who say the surgery was a success, but the patient died. Well, then the surgery wasn't a success. You see how they think? The idea is not to get rid of the tumor. The, the idea is to restore the person to health. And if you're healthy, you don't have a tumor. It's a different idea. But they go to war against the tumor. So what I always want to know are you able to eat? Can you sleep? And are you having any fun? Do you have energy? 